Good morning, Massimo. Hi, Andrea, and uh, hello to everyone. And thank you for your participation in this uh, GMI webinar. Join me today, my colleague Andrea Spola, who will help me to lead this webinar. Andrea, if you are agree, let's wait a few moments before starting our presentation to allow everyone to connect. In the same time, in the same time, some words about uh, today's topic that intends to give a general overview on intrinsic safety and uh, on the device involved in this method of protection, where GMI has developed considerable experience over the year. We will examine the real application of the process industry involving analog and digital isolators and uh, how this device can practically solve situations that uh, are usually handled with more complex and expensive system. I want to remind uh, to everyone that during our webinar, there will be an opportunity for uh, the attendee to send us the question through the question and answer feature. We will try to answer uh, your question live. If uh, we are unable to give a live answer, we will send you an email as soon as possible with the information you request. Great, Massimo. Yes, please do use it. just the Q&R button, not a chat, and we'll uh, answer during the webinar. Okay, let's uh, let's start, Massimo. I guess people are connected, and we just adjust the presentation of uh, first of a company. So okay, you know, okay, Andrea. Well, let me give some information on uh, today's speaker. As already mentioned, I have a pleasure to have with me today, Andreas Polo. Andrea is a global account manager at uh, GMI. He has over twenty years of experience in the machine and process automation market. His uh, main area of activity is the industrial control process, an hazardous area, application involving senior conditioning, remote control, and bus interface. He has great expertise in international relations in the automation sector as, uh, and has consolidated his experience in Europe. Now, he takes care of customers and markets worldwide. Andrea is a functional safety engineer from 2016. And uh, I, Massimo Pagani, product manager and technical support manager at GMI. I have been employed at GMI for about uh, 11 years. And my main role is to receive and process customer technical uh, requests and uh, assist them in the correct choice of products to be used in their application. Uh, I'm a functional safety engineer from 2020. Uh, well, some information about our company. GMI, GM International is an Italian company born from the experience of Elton Instrument and for over 25 years has been designed, engineering and manufacturing a complete range of seed certified intrinsically safe devices. Our products are used in automation packages as, such as DCS, DSD, foreign gas, marine, and so on. In various industrial sectors such as oil and gas, petrochemical, pharmaceutical, food, beverage, and railway. All our products are tested one by one and must conform the strictest worldwide specification. The next slide uh, show how GM uh, International is located around the world with over 200 people who make up our staff distributed on all continents. We have uh, product stock distributed in our main branches in Dubai, Singapore, Houston, and uh, in the other part of the world. GM International has always been perceptive to market demands. For this reason, its products are innovative in order to get maximum customer satisfaction. The strong point on which GM International based is activities that complete pre and post sales assistance in order to lead its customer to find the best solution for their application and to assist them in the correct use of the product. In addition, uh, 
all our products are entirely designed and produced in our headquarters in Italy and are tested in an automated process. The goal of our company is to supply and guarantee novelty and high quality products. All our products are tested by, one by one and must conform to the strict worldwide specification. And again, our products are tested and certified by over uh, 15 independent TUB agencies and laboratories. They have certification available for different market applications in Europe, America, Korea, China, India, etc. According to the new ESC 61508, the seed certification of the product is no longer valid, is not supported by the system capability design certification. For this reason, all our products are designed to adhere to the functional safety management, seal freeze, systematic capability certification. Additionally, over 10% of GMI employees are engaged in the research and development of new technologies, and many of our resources are in reinvest in their research and develop the department. And the last but not least, all our products are covered by five-year warranty. In the following slide, you can see the wide range of products we deal with. Here we can see yes barrier, safety relay, galvanic isolator, multiplexer for temperature or digital sensor, seal free power supply, termination board dedicated to the most popular PLC DCS system, and again, our multiplexer and so on. Furthermore, our company promotes advanced courses of, uh, on fun functional safety and safety in AX environments conducted by expert trainers. You can find uh, all the information about it on our website. The last slide, the list some of our main collaborators and customers distributed among system vendor, a PC, and them and end user. Well, Andrea, it's your turn to introduce the topics of uh, today. Okay, thank you very much, Massimo. We start uh, looking at the intrinsically safe isolators parts, and uh, this presentation is divided in a few chapter. We look first at the protection methods and the intrinsic safety concept, and then we see application, modbus, and conclusion. I remind you anytime you have any question, please just write and we'll answer live. We want to start with the first, uh, say, poll. There are a few polls in this presentation, so we want to have you. Uh, let's, let me check what it is X protection method, if you want to answer. If you think that the uh, basic protection principle for intrinsic safety is isolation, if it is a uh, mitigation, if it's segregation, privation, containment, uh, those are uh, quite familiar uh, names and uh, for the people who are involved in, uh, say, in hazardous air applications. So there are different types, of course, and uh, the intrinsic safety is one of that. And there is only, of course, one answer, which is valid. To that and I think uh, and I see that uh, of course you are demanding that uh, you know very well this part uh, we have uh, please uh, try to answer and uh, we try to close and uh, go ahead with the next uh, slides thank you and uh, most of you we want to close it most of you of course uh, we want to share uh, answer correctly so it's the prevention methods and uh, so we're going to close this one and then we go to the next one so uh, <clears throat> uh, protection methods uh, um, let's say how to power and the read signal from the field device installing hazardous air there are different typology of course and, uh, and different technology uh, let's say segregation when the Technology when the hardware is encapsulated, is uh, immersed in the oil, is uh, pressurized into cabinets. Uh, or there are different uh, technology like uh, containment, uh, flame proof boxes, big uh, aluminum boxes. Or uh, we are in the provision where increased safety, intrinsic safety is uh, the other technology used. Um, 
so if you look at this part of course intrinsic safety the, the, the less uh, um, i would say uh, it has less impact on the systems because uh, we prevent so uh, we see that intrinsic safety is uh, very flexible and cost effective uh, compared to the other technologies and uh, to realize this kind of uh, technology of the of prevent and uh, grant uh, from explosion the hazardous area equipment uh, you have to install in this uh, in this uh, plant or in the cabinet uh, the unit that are, are called intrinsically safe barriers or just barriers we see later the difference between uh, barriers and intrinsically safe, or oh, let's say, or isolated barriers. But uh, let's say, for the moment, uh, let's uh, uh, stop and uh, let's uh, concentrate in uh, this terminology. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, should we use it in, in uh, digital isolators in, uh, in uh, intrinsically safe applications? Of course, that is uh, one uh, important point because uh, when there are different uh, grounds, different potential in the plants, uh, the isolators uh, uh, limits or eliminate completely the, all the ground loop effects. Uh, and these isolators, uh, of course, intrinsically safe isolators, uh, limit the quantity of energy that can lead to uh, an explosion in the atmosphere. Hmm? There are different uh, types, uh, there are different uh, modules that can be used, can be analog input, analog output, digital input, whatever, temperature, uh, smoke detector, load cell. So different technology, different modules uh, adapt to different uh, applications. There are, of course, in the market, uh, some uh, modules that are also universal. Universal, not for all, but at least for analog uh, input, output, digital input, output. Those are also available in the market. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are also different uh, possibilities like uh, um, technology that can be used um, that uh, can, uh, of course, decide that just input output uh, straight uh, connection and isolate and straight connection. There are also possibility of having a wide range for input and outputs or sourcing technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you have a two, three, or four wide sensor, you need, of course, a source or sink uh, different types. So the 4 to 20 milliamps, for instance, cannot be just 4 to 20. It must be uh, source or sink. Uh, if you need to uh, power the sensor, or if you get the already the external power sensor. There are modules with the digital bus communication, with the Modbus, for instance. Uh, with the burnout uh, detections, uh, in case uh, the fault, you got a fault on the sensor, on the input, there are models with very high accuracy or low accuracy, of multiple isolations, mm? uh, or maybe you want to program some parameters. And of course, the last thing is that the installation can be in the rail, on, uh, can be in, uh, of course, in customized special termination boards. We want to go now with Massimo, um, module by module, technology by module, by technology, to look at what, how you can use, where you can use the different isolation uh, modules uh, for different topology. Now we have another poll. Hope you like this kind of uh, uh, poll. So is uh, the first is uh, dedicated to the this one. And uh, we want to know by, from you what kind of technology you use if you use it intrinsically safe isolators when you have this uh, application or you use uh, the Zener barriers, hmm? the old technology, or if you use a PLC DCS system with the integrated IS inputs. There are a lot of uh, solutions in the market, not really a lot, but uh, some of the main um, uh, DCS and PLC manufacturer offer already these uh, uh, modules with intrinsically safe uh, inputs. Or maybe use other technology like EXD or EXP, which is not the part of the presentation today. Okay, thank you for answering. And uh, of course, uh, I see we can't, we're gonna close it now. Yes, we're gonna stop it.
So we see that uh, we want to share share with you that, of course, uh, the most uh, uh, the most important part is the gateway to three safe technology. Of course, there are still people using Zener barriers, uh, and because they are still produced, of course, some use uh, already uh, PSC and DCS with the IS input, and other, of course, EXD XP technology. Okay, thank you, thank you for this uh, for your answer, your let's say contribution. Now we want to show you the analog inputs uh, technology. So um, modules that uh, in this case, you can see a schematic example of a dual channel modules. There are two, in all slides you can see now, there are different uh, type. So there are two modules, one with the blue, blue label, one with the green label. The blue labels one is dedicated to the IS modules. So with intrinsically safe technology and the green module for just isolation for safe R application. So you can distinguish the two modules, but by the way, more or less a part of course of the, <clears throat> the, the current limitation, the power limitation uh, required by the uh, EX uh, modules, uh, the, say the schematic inside is more or less the same. So you can see a modules that can be of course uh, connected to as uh, we have seen uh, for sensor, two wire sensor, so two wire meaning that uh, the unit is powered by the modules, or unit with uh, unit with external power it can be single dual channel in this case. Also, and uh, in this case, also the modules are isolated uh, um, between input out and power supply, but also isolated from channel to channel. Possibility also for having, of course, the heart communication. Uh, modules are, are transferred for heart and uh, with uh, different uh, certification, which is what Massimo was also, I guess, a question of uh, one uh, attendees. If uh, you can use IS modules in the cell loop, of course, it can be used if uh, the module is still rated, as uh, we can see now. Uh, for the, of course, you can have also modules like this one where you want to use, uh, you want to connect one, ex one um, field sensor in devices to two outputs. In this case, you can see they can use the same modules connected uh, um, where you realize special connection between uh, uh, the two channel inputs uh, and you can get uh, two outputs uh, with different uh, standard also uh, available. That is duplication. We have a solution also with the four channels. In this case, uh, four independent channels so that uh, modules can be used as uh, <clears throat> um, with a special math function having uh, connection and the logic that control the output by the first, second, third and fourth output input. Uh, and uh, this is a configurable splitter of uh, you can triplicate or you can quad, you can quad the inputs. It's fully configurable by PC with different functionality. This is not really dedicated for project, but probably for OEM customers that likes to have a more compact unit for with the multiple channel. Uh, we have also a possibility of having a modules with um, triple alarm. So you can connect as well the four, two or three or four wide sensors on the inputs uh, and having out uh, the same four to 20 or, and uh, two alarms. Two alarm can be used as a uh, uh, low alarm, high alarm, wind alarm, whatever. It's a completely configurable and uh, can be activated on different uh, values uh, on the different uh, from zero, from zero for two, 20 milliamps. Massimo, I'll leave you in this, pres this presentation, this slide, because it's dedicated more to the line monitoring. So in this uh, um, presentation, we don't want to produce, introduce the products, uh, but mainly what uh, special function you can uh, have, uh, what is required now in the project. So the line fall detection, for instance. Yes, let's see how analog input devices can manage a line fault. Uh, a 420 milliamps uh, signal allow us to standardize the measurement and using the number standard. We know that in the range between 3.6 milliamp and uh, Andrea, 
sorry the presentation is not uh, share uh, complete ah okay sorry sorry okay should be okay now okay okay we know that in the range of between 3.6 milliamp and 21 milliamp the measure is valid and correct the analog barriers allow us to read a mirror signal that goes from zero to a maximum of uh, 26 uh, 30 milliamp towards the plc dcs system in fact the barrier has the main purpose of limiting the current in the loop to a non-dangerous level which allow us not to generate a danger of explosion this precise standard allows us to program our PLC to provide us with a line fault when uh, the set thresholds are exceeded, or in case of uh, using devices with programmable alarm thresholds on board to provide a single fault contact or cumulative fault to a DCS system. But uh, now let's uh, let's an analyze how to obtain a core system redundancy through trip amplifier devices. The next slide. One of the typical application which uh, uses a redundant system with uh, several devices, analog in this case, is what we can see in the following slide, where a two out of three redundant system of Three amplifier, trip amplifier is used to activate our final element. This system and uh, its uh, redundant logic allow us to um, replace more complex system composed of uh, safety PLC, allowing us to save more engineering cost. But uh, how it work? If uh, one of the element in the field fails, or if one of the three amplifier fails, the two out of three redundancy allow uh, to maintain our safety function and process availability at IL, at high level. I repeat, this type of logic would be possible in, uh, in another way, only by using a PLC system with redundant cards, having a considerable higher cost. The system allows us to achieve an IC free safety standard with high process availability. Well, Andrea, analog output. Yes, the analog output uh, more or less the same. Uh, so, modules with a single dual channel with um, compatible with the heart, heart protocol, so standard for, let's say, transparent communication for heart and also with the possibility to have uh, uh, loop monitoring open short high impedance alarm and uh, we have also a slide how this unit sorry it works massimo yes also in case of uh, analog output devices let's see how a line or load fault is managed in this case is it's the barrier itself in addition to limiting the current and voltage toward the field to no dangerous level that carries out a real diagnosis of uh, the loop towards the hazardous area in fact uh, the internal circuit of the barrier is designed to provide us with a real full signal when very precise thresholds are exceeded but uh, how is this fault reported to the system? There are two ways. The first involves the use of a fault contact which is opening when the fault is detected and sent to a digital input card of a dedicated DCS system. In addition, a LED on the barrier, typically red, is turned on. The second method is uh, the mirroring of the fold directly to the analog output card of the PLC. If the PLC is compatible with this system and the supervised analog output card is able to detect a change in impedance at its input, this system guarantees considerable saving in terms of cost as uh, it supervises 
the loop without the need to add a dedicated DCS system for this purpose. But uh, now let's see how it's possible to manage a redundancy system for analog output type application. In this specific application, the management of uh, two 420 milliamp signal towards the dangerous area is not a simple solution as the two signals should be mixed or added in some way. GMI has developed a redundancy system through a special termination board, which takes uh, the two signal coming from two analog output cards of two different PLC and mixes them through its own precise logic. In fact, we will have a main common signal called master and the support of it, a common called slave. The two signals arrive at the terminals of the termination board and at the input of an electronic switch placed on board it. If uh, both signals are regular, the master commands the loop and drives our load in the field. When this master signal fails due to a line fault or because the relative analog output card fails, the current signal relative to, to it goes to zero and the electronic switch placed on the termination board switches to the slave signal, making ensure that the output load continues to be correctly powered. When the master signal is restored, the electronic switch on the termination board switches back to the master signal. Through this uh, switching logic, it's possible to carry out a redundancy also for analog output circuit. And we can say that uh, there are two ways, two different concepts for the use of redundancy. The one that uh, looks at uh, the safety and uh, the safety of the process and the one that looks of, at the availability of the process. The two philosophies are of redundancy are in contrast with each other and the end user must choose which way to go. GMI's analog output redundancy satisfy the concept of process availability, allowing our plan to continue its work even if one of the components in the field fail. GMI solution tries to simplify the redundancy logic to try to obtain the best possible result. Well, Andrea. Okay. Thank you so Massimo. So let's see the, the situation for digital input. So also for digital input, we have a unit with a uh, line monitoring. We see later how it works. And uh, input in this case can be for uh, simple contact or proximity. And uh, output is, uh, of course, standardized for PLC communication and can be single or dual channel. Uh, we have also solution for, let's say, duplication. So you want to duplicate the same contact and send to two PLC um, contacts. So you want to duplicate the same to two PLC inputs. Uh, in this case, uh, it can be used uh, in the dual, uh, the dual with the dual scope. So the second output can be just duplicator or can report a fault. So the fault on the input side. Also in this case, uh, the thing is uh, what we want to highlight that uh, for the fault, you need an extra digital input, okay, on your PLC. But we have a solution, uh, we see later how uh, this will be also um, po possible to avoid it in order to use just the digital input and uh, see there the uh, fault. We have a solution also with, uh, <coughs> for the books, sorry, with the proximity the sensor, so the proximity sensor can be repeated directly to the PLC. In this case, very uh, not simple, but the proximity give you the just the values there. You can see in the in the in the table where the simple current value gives the uh, 
uh, lines hold uh, con values. So you need the, you have a different current for input, different current for close, and when the line break or short circuit happen, you have also in this case different current values. Uh, we do have in our product range of multiple uh, digital input. Uh, so you also in this case, you have a simple straight communication input to output. Also, you can have uh, some kind of math function that can be programmed over, over software. Uh, but uh, very, what is very important, we have developed this solution what, where the uh, Line monitoring is assured by uh, this uh, in the in the the frame uh, in the red frame uh, uh, is highlighted. Yes, when Andrea. Yes. We, we we focus on two particular digital input models that the GMI has developed: C two and C three. Right. Capable of uh, transparently transferring the status of uh, an Amur sensor or contact in the field to a supervised uh, digital input card of, uh, of a PLC. This allows uh, our safety system to know exactly the state of the loop in the field. Furthermore, this transparency makes it possible not to use a dedicated DCS system for dedicated for detecting the fault, as in case of using a normal digital barrier, which needs interpreted to contact to understand the state of the input loop. But uh, uh, how does this transparency work? Well, through a network of uh, resistors connected to transistors, the barrier output is able to provide the exact state of our input According to the logic status of the input one uh, or zero, the device output sends a different impedance value to the PLC. In this way, the PLC, if correctly, if correctly set, can recognize the status of the content in the field. But uh, uh, what happens in the even of a fault detected in the field? In the even of a fault in the field, whether it's a short circuit or an open circuit, the transistor in series with the output loop opens its content, and an high impedance is shown towards the PLC digital input card, which is read by the PLC and as a bad signal or fault. This network of resistor at the barrier output allows us to obtain a mirroring system of the fault towards the PLC. Uh, well, uh, let's see now some particular application involving digital input isolators. The typical application is where we have to isolate a voltage-free contact or an Amur sensor in the field. And uh, in this case, we use the classic digital input barrier or an isolator. isolator. But what happens if in the field we have a voltage 24 volt, 48 volt, 110 volt DC or other. And we have to signal to uh, our system the presence or absence of this voltage. In this case, a standard digital input device cannot be used because its input front end is not available to accept the external voltage from the field. In this case, we should use a digital output relay that is a device that, depending on the voltage that arrives at its common, activates or deactivates an output content and uh, communicates to a PLC the presence or absence of a voltage in the field. The classic example could be the one where we need to communicate to PLC system placed in different contexts. The digital output card of one of the two systems controls our digital output relay, while a digital input card receives the contact status of the digital output relay. What may be the main problem that can be encountered using a relay for this purpose? Well, first of all, we have to keep in mind that usually a relay is designed to switch important value of current, while usually towards a uh, digital input system, 
the currency play at very low, typically less than 100 milliamp. In this situation, we can face problem of oxidation of the relay contents. Therefore, it's essential to choose a safety relay with the golden play contents, which constitutes a switching thanks to uh, its high conductive performance, even current lower than 10 milliamp. Uh, to deal with this problem, GMI has equipped most of the relay of the new D5000 series with golden play contacts to make them available to this particular application. In addition, GMI has developed a universal device able to receive at its simple different voltage level, selectable via deep switch, while the output provides a free voltage contact of to couple tight compatible with all PLC uh, system, which ensure maximum conductivity, conductivity even at lower currents. We are often asked uh, how to monitor a wet contact uh, which uh, is in the field. Of course, diagnosing a wet contact in the field is, uh, is difficult. Uh, how is it possible to understand and differentiate the closed state of a contact from a short circuit? Uh, Andrea, can okay, thank you. And again, how can we distinguish between the open state of a contact and open circuit fault? This condition makes us think that diagnosing wet contact from voltage in the field is impossible, but GMI through one of its analog device and study a possible solution to overcome this type of problem and be able to provide diagnostics of a wet contact in the field. In fact, using a trip amplifier and uh, connecting it with a network of the resistors to the contact in the field, we can obtain voltage levels at the, the input of the device that, can, that allow us to discriminate one state from another. Furthermore, by programming our chip amplifier with interventation threshold, we can provide the PLC with a different state for each condition of the input contact, being able to diagnose the normal operating state of the contact from a fault state. Well, Andrea. Okay, thank you, Master. The, the two applications we must have explained uh, ju just uh, now are application, of course, not for hazardous air application. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, just, uh, of course, right. uh, the values, uh, voltage values in, uh, in the field are not compatible for uh, uh, hazardous air applications. Okay, thank you, Marcel. So we go to the digital out. We have uh, also in this case uh, different solutions uh, with, uh, for powering different uh, loads uh, with different um, uh, power consumption. So the application is like that, and uh, it can be uh, it can be used also um, can be applied with different modules that offer also the line monitor also in this case. So. Now we are closing for the AI, DI, DO, and uh, AO, all the applications uh, regarding uh, the line monitor, where the line monitor is required. And uh, we have also, in this case, uh, come, just to come back to the previous question, the CIR3 certification for all these modules. Uh, so IS isolators with the CIR3 certification. We have also modules with the triple, uh, channels with the triple of course in this case for each channel is um, is completely configurable it can be also customized it can be used with different uh, valves uh, and different uh, loads uh, mainly valves of course in all of them can be also some uh, light some horn some uh, some communicators that uh, is uh, needs to be powered in uh, hazardous R applications and the master, we explain the next slides how this um, line monitor will work also for uh, the digital out modules. Yes, also for uh, digital output modules, uh, GMI offers model with onboard line and load diagnostic to monitor loops uh, in hazardous area. 
the model D5048S loop powered and D5049S bus powered, based on the impedance of the load in the field, are able to check the health of the loop and uh, in the event of a fault, generate uh, a signal to the PLC directly to the digital output car of, uh, or through the classic voltage free contact to a dedicated DCS a digital input card. The D5040AS being a loop powered barrier for normally energized load is uh, able to monitor in the impedance of the input loop when the load is on. If uh, it sees an impedance below 50 ohm, it detects a short circuit port and on the PLC side, it transfers the information directly to the digital output card showing an high impedance we translate into a loop current of less than 2 milliamp. When the impedance of the load on the other end exceeds uh, 10 kilo, the barrier sees an open circuit fault and in the same way as before, show an high impedance in the digital output card with PLC. The signal of a fault can also occur through a voltage free contact to be acquired through a dedicated DCS or through a fault led placer on the front of the barrier. Uh, the D5049S on the other end being bus powered provides a complete diagnostic towards the field, both in condition of load on and in condition of load uh, off. Like uh, the D5040AS, it can transfer the fault information directly to the digital output card for the PLC with an high impedance variation or through a voltage free contact to be acquired with a digital input card of a DCS dedicated to this purpose. But now let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, the redundancy problem also for intrinsically safe digital output application. Basically, uh, there are three ways to obtain the redundancy of this system with three different levels of redundancy. The first redundancy system involves all the elements that make up the loop, from the valve in the field to the intrinsically safe barriers to the PLC card that control the loop. This is certainly the most effective and safest redundancy system, but also the most expensive as to create the redundancy of all elements of the loop as considerable cost. The intermediate way would be to redundant uh, all the devices except the final element that is the valve. This means having two barriers and two cars controlling the loop. The main problem that arises in this case is that the redundancy up to the barrier forces us to mix the output signal to the barriers. This is feasible from the theoretical point of view, but uh, first of all, it involves uh, the rating of the intrinsically safe loop from ER to EB, which means that the final element cannot be installed in zone zero, but only in zone one and also involves the difficulty to find a final element compatible with the safety parameter that are added. Having to put the outputs of two intrinsically safe barriers in parallel. This is certainly the most complex method to implement. The simplest and cost effective way is the one proposed in the slide where redundancy is obtained up to the digital output card of the PLC. After that, through two diodes, we mix the common signal coming from the two digital outputs at the input of a single barrier that guides our final element. This is the simple system as by not performing operation that has currents in the Zardus area. There are no problem in terms of compatibility with the final element and moreover is certainly the cost effective solution as the redundancy of the devices reaches the PLCs only. In the next slide, Andrea, we encounter a digital output application where we 
were asked to be able to control a final element, typically a valve by controlling it uh, with uh, two digital output cards. The final element normally energized, but be de energized only if both digital outputs give the switch off command. The solution studies to obtain an high availability to the process and to keep the plant always active in order not to have uh, loses in terms of uh, production cost. Can be obtained through a double channel seal free relay with the output contest placed in parallel. In fact, the, in this way, the load will be de-energized only if both digital outputs uh, give the shutdown command. Of course, the solution is to the disadvantage of safety as putting the output counter of a seal free relay in parallel leads to an increase in possible dangerous uh, failures. But thanks to the GMI relay, we are still able to maintain a C2 level of the application and to obtain an I process availability. The different application where we were asked to create an I uh, safety loop, where the final element was de-energized, where only one of the two digital outputs send the shutdown command. In this case, all we always using the same. Uh, Double channel C3 relay. The desired safety function can be obtained by placing the relay output contact in series. In this way, the C3 level of the loop is increased uh, to obtain the required function. Uh, this application makes us understand that sometimes it's possible to increase the safety or the availability to the process by combining low cost but very smart solution, such as proposed by GMI. Well, Andrea, is okay, the... thank you, Massimo. Just two, uh, two details. This is for uh, application for delay, so non IS application. The yes. previous one, yeah. which is this one, is uh, for IS application. So, so no valve for IS application or application for valve that are in a safe area or zone two uh, area as well. Okay, thank you. So in our product, we can uh, look at the temperature solutions where you can connect uh, any uh, temperature sensors uh, such as uh, thermocouples or RTDs or different uh, two, three, four wire for the RTDs. And the output can be, of course, uh, in this case, uh, uh, 4 to 20 sync of source as the other, of course, uh, with one alarm contact with the mode bus output, different functionalities. Uh, it can be, can, we can have also the application where you need uh, just transfer the sensor, the temperature sensor to the PSC because the PSC is not supported 4 to 20, but uh, he, uh, he needs uh, a thermocouple, so in this case, RTDs modules. Uh, uh, with the with the standard, but uh, you need an isolator. So you need an isolator for IS. So the modus is required because we have uh, a hazardous area, but the input on the PSC is uh, just uh, RTDs. Uh, we can have also application where you need a triple alarm modules for temperature with uh, one or two alarms. Or, so with this in this case can be a low alarm, high alarm wind alarm, different uh, typology. And uh, the software that can be used for configuring is explained on the next slide by Massimo. Okay, a few words about the configuration software of the GMD 5000 series barriers. Through this software, it's possible to configure and read all the parameters related to our devices and variables in the field save and reload data and configuration in a local hard drive. Mm. Monitor the variables in the field in real time to verify the correct functioning of the loop. And finally, re record monitoring session and save them in a file. The software is uh, free and downloadable from our website and absolutely compatible with all Microsoft Windows systems. 
In the slide, we see the configuration windows of our T50 172S temperature converter, where it's possible to configure the type of the input sensor, include thermocouples, RTDs, potentiometer, or signals in millivolt. The output parameters are fully user configurable. The possibility of creating a custom table is also available where for specific application, the customer can create a table of input values from for particular sensors such as uh, PTC. And again, the monitoring session where it's possible to check the parameters of the input variable and the help of the loop in the real time. All our D5000 series devices can be configured with this software to perform the main function or to obtain special function. Well, Andrea, is uh, yes, okay. your turn. We have a solution also for uh, load cell, for string gauge, for, for waning applications, where also in this case, solution can be converting the load cell signal, the string gauge into 4 to 20, or repeating the load cell into a load cell, okay? So because you, as a, for the temperature, there are PSC with the, um, with the PSC card with the uh, load cell input to three or four wires. And, uh, but if you need a required your application required Nazardus area connection, you need this kind of isolators topology. Other features like Modbus and uh, alarms are available on these models. Um, maybe we can see also the next one, which is for vibration monitoring applications. So for turbines, we have a lot of users for turbines, for uh, compressor, where the vibration is very critical, where systems like um, Bent Nevada, uh, or uh, national instrument can be used for monitoring the vibrations. Uh, we have, uh, for instance, this is an application. Massimo, you want to say something about this? Yes, particular applications are those involving devices such as accelerometers or vibration sensor. When these accelerometers operate in, in a classified area, they must be isolated through an intrinsically safe barrier, as in in the slide, the D5062S is this, this particular type of sensor, transparently provides the reading system placed in the safe area with a waveform of the same level and frequency as that generated by the sensor, so that the system can read the signal correctly. Provides a full floating DC supply for energizing vibration transducer, accelerometers, or two, three wire sensor located in a Zardus area and repeat the sensor input voltage in a totally isolated circuit located in safe area to drive vibration monitors or a analyzer for rotating machinery control and supervision purpose. GMI can supply device to isolate and power the different types of sensor present in industrial automation and bio. Okay, so we have seen uh, uh, a lot of features on this uh, modules. Uh, there are different possibilities. We wanna ask you the last things regarding what is uh, uh, you consider very important uh, as feature for S interface. Uh, if you like the, of course, the single channel, the multiple channel, the line monitoring, how important is this? Uh, we think it's important, we think because uh, is asked, but of course, maybe you can have another opinion. If it's important, the software, uh, if it's import, are important, the seal certified modules, or also the mathematic function that uh, are available in some modules. Just uh, give your comments on this, and uh, we'll give uh, through the, the, the latest slides for this presentation. It's very difficult to summarize what is. Uh, important but uh, you know when you produce a unit uh, what we do in GMI we produce a we make a unit with a lot of functionality because people ask this that and that and so on and we want to have this extra function and so on 
but uh, sometimes that is not required and uh, uh, or maybe people are asking for having this solution at a very important uh, say cost effective and so on okay thank you thank you for answering you don't share this uh, but uh, we see that is you ask uh, for all of this uh, uh, point that we highlighted. Uh, the latest part is regarding the Modbus. So the Modbus, uh, this is my part, Massimo, if I'm not yes, wrong. Yes. Okay, so uh, you see that uh, we have modules that are available with the Modbus, can be used in, uh, as you can see, in a, in, a, in a rail, where you have a connector that, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the Modbus uh, con is available on the bottom, so it can be uh, daisy chain on this connector, and uh, you can go to any Modbus master device that support the uh, the communications. Uh, you can use for you can uh, have a lot of information over Modbus uh, available, a lot of registers, and uh, not just uh, limited to the four to twenty milliamps uh, values, but uh, all the functionality like um, setup, uh, alarms, uh, um, uh, low alarms, or maybe uh, health of the loops and so on. The modules that we are offering are uh, offering, of course, I have hot swapping, uh, so they can uh, you can uh, say remove the unit by in, uh, when they are powered. And also the uh, the what is very important uh, the C certifications the Modbus is not certified is not a certified sale so but it's not interfering so it's not interfering with the with the safety loop so the, the unit remain still certified without uh, having uh, um, say influence by the Modbus interface which is just for monitoring uh, features. And you can create uh, your own network where you have a lot of devices in a uh, very long network uh, and uh, up to 1,200 meters, more than 32 devices. You can multiply by also repeaters and you can connect it to different uh, systems like PC, HMIs, DCS, or safety PLCs. Uh, this is basically what you can use. So you can have you have a zone two, one, or zero where you have uh, all sensors uh, connected in the barriers, and the communication is uh, go to directly through over Modbus to different uh, systems. We do have a solution for analog input for digital analog output, uh, digital input, or digital uh, the analog output. We don't have it. Digital input, or digital output, uh, temperature modules, and others uh, like. Uh, string gauge or multiplex. Uh, maybe Massimo, this a uh, few words about this application. Yes, in the, the last slide, uh, we examine an application where a sensor is stored in a hazardous area, must communicate via, via uh, RS-485 with the control unit located in safe area. This sensor located in a hazardous area must be isolated and powered to two barriers. One barrier will supply power to the classify area so that the sensor is protected and cannot generate spark that can cause an explosion. The other barrier will have to provide isolation of the RS-485 bus line so that it can connect with the unit control. The advantage of using this specific connection is the possibility of uh, connecting up to 32 devices multi-drop mode on a single bus which allow us to form an integrated network of devices with considerable savings uh, on installation cost. When installing a, a device with bus interface in hazardous area, there are two yes barriers that need to be installed, a power barrier and a signal barrier. The signal and the power are two separate uh, intrinsically safe circuit, so they must comply with the proper intrinsically safe segregation distance. The 1061 field bus isolating repeater provides proper isolation and driving of uh, an RS-485 intrinsically safe line located in a Zardos area location uh, communicated with the uh, RS-485 line located in safe area. The unit provides the line termination 
capability on both hazardous and safe side. Well, Andre. Okay. Thank you, Massimo. Uh, so we reached the conclusion. Uh, so give an overview. Uh, if you look at a different technology, I've seen that uh, this is intrinsic safety, but uh, there is explosion proof or purging pressurization. Looking at the explosion proof, uh, intrinsic safety is uh, more safe, more flexible. Installation costs are lower and also maintenance cost is lower. Isn't the only technology that uh, allow live maintenance, uh, live, very live maintenance, where when the unit is powered without stopping, without, uh, of course, uh, um, uh, having some shutdown of your plant. Uh, we, of course, cannot be applied everywhere because there is a limitation power. Uh, so it can be used only for sensor on uh, some, uh, some unit for uh, monitoring. But what we want to say is that uh, use an isolator, but it's not sufficient condition for achieving a safety hazard side. So the system loop must be verified, verified and certified. So, so the, <laughs> the unit, sorry, the unit uh, must be compliant with the area classification. So if you have a zone zero, the unit must be used for zone zero connection. The field device must be certified for the area you, you want to apply it to. And also the safety parameters of the field and the isolator must match. Hmm? Also the cables parameters must match. Very complicated, I know, it's very complicated. And also max temperature in complex with RX certification must match. What you want to say that uh, if you look at this uh, simple connection where you have a temperature sensor on the field, you have the barriers, uh, these parameters must be verified. So UO, IO, PO, safety parameters of the barriers of the isolator must match with the I, UI, II, and PI and uh, for the transmitters, okay? Also the CO and the HOLO, LO, like uh, um, capacitance and ductance must match with the uh, parameters of the unit and also parameters of the cable. CC and C are parameters of the cable. How you can check this? We have internal software, internal tool in our website where you can check for, for each product. You can check, oh, sorry, uh, me back. So you can check for each product if the, um, the, 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 of course, the barriers and the, you put the unit of the transmitter you want to apply with, and also the parameters of the cable, you can check if the loop is verified or not. Okay, this is a really interesting tool. You can go on our website, uh, of course, register yourself. You can have the uh, user and password for use of that. We want to also spend a few words about uh, Zener barriers and isolated barriers. People, uh, also you, are using. Of course, can be used because uh, uh, Zener barriers are low in cost, simple design, low powered. They have some issues on uh, with the voltage drop. Uh, but uh, what is very important, uh, they need to be applied with the field device already isolated and they require special dedicated heart connection. Okay, that is very important. So you don't spend too much on the hardware, but of course on the application is much more relevant what you are spending. The isolated battery is uh, of course more expensive, is bigger, can be also bus power. Uh, they have uh, some additional uh, uh, let's say features like um, uh, short circuit and reverse polarity proof can be used with uh, grounded sensor or ungrounded sensors. It don't require any heart con connection. That is the most important part because heart connection, you have to, to apply, you have to connect and you have also to check regularly because it may change by the time. 
Okay, question and answer. We don't see any question from you. Thank you. Uh, if you wanna, of course, uh, uh, write us, uh, you can uh, write us anytime. You can check any documentation and the private certification, whatever is necessary. Also software, just show you the, the tool for the loop verification on our website. We remind you our webinars. Okay, so our webinars are continuously updated. Uh, you can also check uh, uh, what there will be in the next, uh, as, a, as a next. We have another one, uh, Massimo and I in uh, January, but the other colleagues are providing set, uh, other things, uh, topics about uh, mainly uh, functional safety, EX, uh, and uh, uh, cybersecurity, and so on. We have a very full program on that. Also, you can look at uh, this webinar review again. We have a YouTube channel, and uh, you can, of course, uh, share with uh, your colleague if it's necessary. Just rate what we did, if you like or not, thank you. And we try to improve next time what was not, uh, let's say, uh, we, what we didn't like it or that. Thank you very much for answering. And we'll leave you after this, uh, of course, because uh, your time is precious as our course. <laughs> thank you, thank you for answering. You are very good. Too kind. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're gonna stop it, uh, and uh, we the last slide is of course. Let me, of course, remind you of course our name, web, emails, and the face. If you wanna write us. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you to all our attendees. We think. <laughs> Look forward to, to see you again. Okay, thank you very much and keep in touch. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.